G'day! In today's video, I'm opening up a Lenovo Mix 510-12 ISK, which is this model right here. And the issue with this one is that it's switching off over after a period of time and random intervals. So I'm going to be using a T4 screwdriver on one, two, three, four, five, six different screws. So we do need a T4 screwdriver for these ones. And there is a magnet here and along here, here and here as well. Keep going, going. Sometimes they don't want to lift up. Okay, with it like that, we should be able to flip it over. And we separate the plastic trim from the body. And I don't know where the best spot to be will be. Let's say at the top here, I'm just getting a nail in. If you use something like a plastic card, it should also work. There we go, so that's pushed through. And I should just be able to go around it. The yeah, first thing we'll do once we open it is disconnect the display. There we go, that's mostly lifting. There we go. So the Lenovo logo, pull that slightly towards you. Then we have these connectors here. So we should just be able to get a nail under there and flick it the black bit up, like so. Black bit up, like so. And just pull back slightly. There we go. Next up while we're here is we want to disconnect the battery here. So I'm just gonna cheat a little bit and just grab a small bundle of cables and pull that, wiggling it top up and down and slight, lightly pulling back. There we go. So I'd say the reason why this is switching off, I'd be assuming is this fan, which looks relatively dusty. Another thing to note, you could upgrade your storage as well quite easily using an NVMe SSD, which is strangely almost right on this heat pipe, which is very odd. So from here, I'm gonna undo these four screws here and lift the copper cooler out. I will apply new thermal paste while I'm doing that. So it is recommended to have some already on hand. So one screw, two screw, three screw, which seems oddly not attached. And you have one here and one here. Go. It should be able to come out. There we go. Mm, still mostly damp, actually. That's not bad. I will reapply that. I do want to check out the fan here. See how it is dust wise. Not bad, not bad. One thing I did note though, was when I was undoing the cooler, this screw here had a few less turns than these two. So I feel like it wasn't talking down the right amount of pressure. That's fine. See much dust on the copper? No, and no. So I'll still go give this a blowout with an air compressor and I'll be right back. Now time to clean up some thermal paste. So what I'm using is just some toilet paper, some isopropyl, you could probably use Windex if you got that around or any form of most cleaners should be fine. Even a damp tissue, spray it on here. Uh, let's start with, start with the processor. So that's coming off very well. So I'd say that 
thermal paste did have some decent life left in it. But here in, might as well do it. Something that only takes a split second. This one here. Good. Another way, if it is hard, you can go over it with a toothbrush. It tends to help move it on. There we go. Now, I should hopefully have some Deep Cool Z5 still left in the tube. Granted, really not much is going to be needed here. This is one very small die. Definitely the last of the tube. As I'm not sure if I'm actually getting much, if anything, out of there. Go yeah, full coverage. Yeah, from here, screw the CPU fan back into position. Also, while we're at this position, you could upgrade the MVMe. Pretty easy to remove. One Phillips head screw, lift up slightly, and wiggle backwards. So from the factory, we have a very out of focus picture. We have a 256 gig, eh, what brand are we? Samsung Drive, so it's Samsung OEM Drive of some variety, MZ-VLV2560. To install that's pretty straightforward as well. Well, Mr. the Burns had done it. The power plant had won it with Roger Clemens clucking all the while. Hi, you've called Shattered. This is Rick. Hello, Rick, is it? Yes. Rick, um, this is Stephen Newbold here. I'm just bringing, um, I came in the other day about the, the battery uh, the blown up. Uh, what one was, oh, that was a flip phone of some variety, I think. Sorry, say that, again? That was a flip phone? No, it wasn't, no, just an ordinary phone. Oh. Um, a, tel a Telstra light phone. Yep. And you said that the patch would be in by the end of the week. Well, I was expecting that by that, but I'm still yet to receive it. Yeah, right. Well, it's blown, yeah, you know the one that's blown up, yeah, the Telstra the light phone, yeah, that's a few years old now, a couple of years old. Yeah. And, um, yeah, it, uh, you said probably the, uh, it hasn't come in yet. No. Um, if you can let me know when it does, please. Yeah. Yeah. Can do. Okay, thanks. No worries. Bye. 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 And... Excuse me. Slide it in here. And drop it down. Show that again. Slide that in. Push down. And then we have a single Phillips head screw to put in up here under my hand there we go so that's that reinstalled zoom out further now we'll reinstall the copper cooler and loosely line it up to where it should go drop it and just loosely torque them up huh. Keep working around. That one's actually already torqued down now. There we go. So that's that part of it reinstalled. 
Now we need to put the screws back in the fan. No, nope, that's not the screw for the fan. Good job, me. That is the screw for the copper cooler. Down here. Another one up here. Strangely, there's not one for here. Whatever. And now. Now the fan screws. One here. And one diagonally opposite. There we go. So once we've got the fan reinstalled, copper cooler installed, thermal paste on the cooler. Next up, we want to reconnect the screen and then reconnect the battery after that. So the screen itself, we need to have the Lenovo side to the top and then we fold the screen forward. And we should have these two connections in pretty close proximity. So if I zoom in down here, we will see the connectors that we need to fold up, up, in. So both of these are in open positions. I'm gonna fold these down. Now the harder one's going to be, oh, this cable here is the display, this cable here is the touch panel. So we'll get the touch panel on first, just because it's more difficult. Touch goes up. If you have a pair of tweezers, it's probably recommended to use that as I can just grip the cable, feed it in. Try and feed it in, there we go. And then get it up to the white line. There we go. And pull the latch down. That's now in the lock position. Also two things, if I zoom out a little bit more. This cable is replaceable, as there is a connector over here. And this one, if you have it display issues, it does pop off, like so. So to reattach that, you would push down here. And that's now connected. And if we zoom it in over here, feed it into there, and pull the latch down. So it's now reconnected. Once we're at that state, we can just fold the screen up. Remember to reconnect your battery. Pretty straightforward, wiggle it slightly, and just push, push and pull. Push that way, pull it towards the other end, and now that's reconnected. And there, fold the screen down, and sit it loosely. And you should just be able to pinch it around. That should click it into position. Once we're at this stage, next up we've got to go back to using the T4 screwdriver and reinstalling the six screws that are on the bottom. So yeah, not much to it now. You're on the home stretch. My biggest issue is I don't know where to put my T4 screwdriver. Bingo. Now just do be cautious as the magnet, the magnets will draw the screwdriver across, or the screw across. Also, they're not very magnetic. I would say that's to help reduce the interference with the magnets that are already here. So, once you've got this all back together, you should be right to plug in the power, turn it on, and just use the machine as normal. I'm hoping that this, or pretty hopeful that this will resolve the overheating issue that this one was having. Also, if, if you've cracked it open during this video, you've potentially either changed the display, upgraded your SSD. Also, while you're in there, I do have another video where I repair the charger port on one of these. But you could repair the charger port, or you can just simply replace the thermal paste and blow out the dust. So 
So I hope this video has helped you. And I will see you guys in another one down the line. Have a good day and goodbye. See you.